Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Um, welcome. It's the uh, Turnarounds Masterclass. Uh, this is one of the monthly masterclasses that we do here at AcousticMasterclass.com. Um, do let me know where you're watching from. We have the chat uh, log there on the site. Um, please let me know in the chat log if someone can just type in that you can hear me and see me okay. Um, and yeah, that would be great. Uh, I know we have a few people online, but before I carry on, it would just be nice to know that it's working. Good. Okay. Um, in fact, if I, ah, brilliant. Hi. Hey, Ian, North Wales. Oh, yeah, yeah. Up in banger. Um, I'm just going to refresh the page and I'll hit play as well, just to make sure. And then we'll get crack on with the, uh, the lesson. Um, there we go. Yes, it's working. So um, thanks so much to everyone uh, that's here. If you're new to the site, welcome, a massive welcome to Acoustic Masterclass. Um, every month we have these quite uh, specialist courses. Um, for the last, I don't know, at least this year, they've been predominantly on blues guitar. Um, last month, we had a caged course, which is uh, now visible inside the lesson vault of the site. Um, so if you're interested in the cage system, you can go across. But this month, we're looking at um, a lesson called Discover the Three Must-Know Authentic Turnarounds that will improve your Delta Blues and make you a better guitarist. Um, now, Delta Blues, it, it'll actually improve your blues, you know, not just Delta Blues if you play um, electric guitar these these um, turnarounds are all useful for electric, acoustic, delta blues, modern blues, um, any kind of blues really, and also other styles of music too. To know these licks, um, to know these turnarounds, they're all useful parts of vocabulary that you can add to your soloing, um, and just help you make help make you a more rounded player. But definitely for blues, um, these. If you play a, a classic turnaround, um, then you're gonna you're gonna sound authentic, and you're gonna sound you know people are gonna say okay that's the blues, which is what we're trying to do, right? Play the blues as well as we can. Um, so let's crack on with it. Um, inside this page, you've got the uh, the turnarounds worksheet. If you want to get that visible somewhere, um, that would be really handy. Uh, I'm going to do that right now myself, actually. I'm going to open up the download turn turnarounds worksheet, which is just below this video, um, and it should open for me. Um, and then we'll crack on with the lesson. So as you can see, the first page of the, the mini work book kind of thing, uh, it says, says turnarounds, chord sheet, and notes. So I'll just quickly talk about that. In this situation, I'm playing. We're, we're looking at these uh, turnarounds in, over a twelve-bar blues in the key of E. Um, these turnarounds are all movable. You could play them in any key um, with a little bit of figuring out uh, different positions on the neck and that kind of thing. But they're all movable, as most things are on guitar. Um, you just shift them up a fret, and suddenly, instead of being an E, you'll be an F. Shift them up two, you'll be an F sharp. S shift them up three frets, you'll be in G. So if it's a blues in G and you want to play one of these turnarounds in G, just imagine you've got a capo on the third fret. Suddenly E is a G and you can. And suddenly you can play the turnaround in G. But for the sake of this lesson, we're going to look at them in the key of E, possibly the first key that we all look at for the blues and maybe the best. I love playing in E. I love playing a, in A as well, particularly on acoustic guitar solo. It seems to really fall under the fingers nicely. So we've got the 12-bar the blues progression. Looking at that sheet, you've got uh, 12 bars. Um, the first box there, 12, 12 bars. You've got the two dots, which mean repeat. So as you can see, at the end of the 12th bar, it says around. So bar 11 and 12, turn around. You've got the two dots. That always takes you back to the previous two dots. Um, and then you repeat and start again, and it can go on and on and on until you stop and end the song. Um, below that, we've got um, four bars. Now, these four bars 
are basically just a bit of a um, a breakdown of exactly what happens over the final four bars. So the B7 bar, the A bar, the E bar, and then the final 12th bar, E and B, um, bar 9, 10, 11, and 12 there. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the lesson. But um, if we scroll down to the next uh, sheet, we've got the um, all-time classic turnaround. So what I'm going to do is um, play that for you right now. Okay. I'll play it one more time. Sorry. And one more time. Here we go. I mean, that was probably the first one I learned. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the first one we all learned. And um, what you've got to do, imagine you're playing a D7 shape with your left hand. Second fingers on the G, second fret. And with your thumb, so we're playing this finger style. Some people will want to use a pick, which is, it is doable with a pick. But I find this style of music a little bit easier, finger style. So, um, because your thumb is there, you slide from two to four on the G. As soon as you pick the second fret, slide like that. So you don't really want to go, you don't want to have a big gap. It wants to be one swift movement like that immediately after you pick it, slide. And then the reason I prefer to play this finger style is your first fingers in position to, to immediately pick the top E. Like that. Okay. Bon, bon. Then we're going to go. We're going to play the G string again with our thumb. So. Ba, ba, ba. Then we just slide that down. And we play the same again, but on the third fret. So thumb. First finger thumb. Notice my set. My first finger on this hand has actually come came came off. Uh, it doesn't have to be there for this turnaround. Okay. Then we slide down one more time to the second fret. Bam, 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 and do the same move. this point you want to play an E chord so so play an E and then I introduce my first second and third finger of the of the right hand and I'm going to pick G B and E and at the same time I'm going to pinch with my thumb like that so I will also say it's the blues, okay? So there's no major, you know, there are many ways of playing the blues, many techniques. If you look at the old great players, they all, some of them are playing with the most atrocious techniques. You know, they're, they're kind of using one finger or two fingers and their thumb. Some of them are playing completely, you know, different, uh, you know, it's not textbook stuff. So... You can mess around with the, the picking style with the right hand. So you can do what's comfortable for you. Um, another way of playing that first lick, that first run, probably the more textbook way, would be to use your first finger on the G and your third finger on the top E. Your second finger is resting on the B. So it would be more like this. And then when you come to play the E, fingers are kind of in the right place so 
So as you can hear, that there is a difference in sound between the two. The first way I showed you, there's a lot more power. You've got your thumb there, you've got your first finger, you can really, you can really kind of pick it hard. This way, it's a little bit more intricate, a bit more delicate. Both are nice in their own way. So there's no one way to play this stuff, you know. Play it the way you can to make it sound good. Um, but I'd say that those two ways of playing it are maybe the most textbook correct way. So after that first little lick, that first little part, we then do a ba bum bum ba bum bum. What we're doing is we're going up to a B7 chord. Okay, if you don't know a B7 chord, second finger on the A, second fret. First finger on the D, first fret. Third finger on the G, second fret. We've got an open B. And actually in this uh, turnaround, I don't, um, in the video example below on this page, I didn't actually play the top E string. But if you want to add your pinky to the top E second fret, then that's a full B7. And what you want to do is walk up to it. Ba -ba -ba -ba. We're actually walking up the, the E blues scale to get us to the five chord. So we go zero on the A, one on the A, two on the A. And when we get to uh, the two on the A, I pinch with the thumb, the first finger, second finger, and third. And this time I've moved them to the D, G, and the B strings. If I'm going a bit quick, if you're watching this live, it immediately at the end of the lesson, this will be back so you can come back and rewatch it. If you're watching it uh, as a pre record, as a, as a recording, then of course you can pause it and go back anytime you want. Okay. Pinch them, pinch them. Quite a nice uh, rhythm that would help. Um, for this style of blues playing. I'm just going to quickly talk about it. It's a little bit off topic, but... Um, but it helps get the vibe and the feel of these turnarounds and this kind of blues playing. We're going pinch, thumb, pinch, thumb. Pinch, thumb, pinch, thumb, bum. Ba, ba, ba. So the whole turnaround goes. And then into the shuffle, okay? The shuffle is just two and four and two and four. Two on the A string, four on the A string. And we're always picking that open bottom E, a kind of drone all the time. So I'm not going to go, you know, hang around too much on these because they're here inside the site and you can always watch them back and use the sync videos below, um, which you can slow down and really learn these. But that's the, the all time classic turnaround. The first one you've got to learn. Now, you can make variations of these turnarounds. And I um, came up with this variation when I was making writing this lesson um, and I figured uh what it, it what it's showing is kind of what's going on quarterly with the turnaround. Um, 
So I mentioned it's a D7 shape and then didn't go ahead and play that D7 shape. I got rid of the first finger and just played the these two notes of the chord. So at this point, I want to add in the full chord. Okay. So same as before, except we're going to keep our first finger in place. And we're going to, at this point, we slide up two to four. And then with our first and second finger, um, we then pick bam, like that. So slide up and then first and second finger on the B and the E, three and four. And that's actually an E7 chord. Part of an E7 chord, dominant seven. Using the same uh, technique, the same kind of. Uh, the same concept, we just slide down to the third fret and do the same thing. But then, to add a bit of a variation, I wanted to do a bit of a major pentatonic, a major lick. Because um, a lot of people, when they learn the blues, they learn the minor pentatonic scale. You know, the, that classic three off, three off, two off, two off, two off, three off. Um, a lot of people don't realize you can also play the two. And also the four. Um, if you don't know that and know a lot about it, check out Hideaway. I'm pretty sure there's a lesson on Hideaway inside the archive. Um, and also inside the lesson vault. Um on uh it's inside a course called uh something like jam the blues without messing up the timing um have a look inside the uh, the lesson vault at the blues courses and inside one of those you'll find the freddie king lick from hideaway which is a really good way to understand the major pentatonic sound um so we add that lick ba -ba -ba -da 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 -da. Then, so it's a hammer on, and actually, I'm looking at the tab there. I might change this. Um, you can go two, four, two, pull off. Okay, so it's a very quick, almost a trill, two to four, pull off, pull off. Okay, it says something slightly different in the tab, I'll get that fixed. Then two on the B. this point I wanted to do uh, a kind of Delta Blues style different B7 so it's still a B7 and um, if you know the Eric Clapton MTV Unplugged album Malted Milk he does this chord all the time him and Andy Fairweather low um, they play this chord which is uh, you bother we're sliding up from a B flat seven to a B seven. So you bar the third fret from the D string, the D, the G, the B, and then you add, you know, you can add your first, your, sorry, your second finger to the fourth fret of the top E. I kind of sometimes feel a bit more power when I use my third finger, either a good, and then you slide up to the fourth fret and that's your B seven. So all together that lick. Then back into the shuffle. Okay. Okay. 
see so there's the uh, a variation on that and of course you can make up your own variations instead of doing that you could play a different lick maybe using the minor pentatonic scale you could just go at the same timing as, as simple as it gets three off then down to the next string as you just down the scale three and then back to an open E it's kind of important that that note is always that an E a bit like it's always an E at that point but it, up until then you could play anything So you can jam at that point. And once you've got this chord under your, this turn around under your fingers, that's a nice little spot for improvising, noodling around the scale or playing part of a lick you already know. But I've written out a nice major pentatonic lick. Okay. So that's the... Um, a variation, and as I say, variations are almost infinite. You know, you could play any lick at any point. You could go anywhere in any time. As long as you get, you land on the right notes at the right, certain notes at the right time, you get away with it. The next chord, the next turnaround is the classic turnaround. I'm actually looking forward to the one after this, but this is the Robert Johnson classic. If you listen to a lot of Robert Johnson records, um, uh, he does this a lot in, in those really early recordings from the 1930s. Um, and it's kind of nice, you know, it's a nice idea. You've got... So this is what's going on on the D string. You're starting here on a D note. You, you're going to walk down. From so third finger on the D string, twelfth fret. Okay, then your second finger is going to come in, play the eleventh fret. Your third finger is going to come in, play the tenth fret, and finally, your third, your first finger is going to move down to play the the ninth fret on the D. And meanwhile, at the same time. You're going to be picking with you, your pinky is always going to stay rooted, kind of planted there or anchored, I should say, is the word I was looking for on the top E string 12th fret. <laughs> giving you a nice solid high E the whole time. So what I'm doing is you pick with the thumb and the first and, and the top E string together. I actually use my thumb and my third finger, and these two are just kind of hanging there doing nothing. So you, you pinch together, one, and then your third finger picks the top E again. One and one and two and three and four. Course you can mess with the timing a bit what I did there is one two three two two three three two three one add a kind of triplet feel which is used a lot in the blues particularly on uh, there's a tune inside this uh, the lesson vault called me and the devil blues there's a version of me and the devil blues a lesson page and a lot of triplets going on in that so if you're into that sound check out that lesson but the way it's written is one and two and three and four we'll do that one more time two oh uh, the other thing i need to mention is it comes in on the second beat of bar 11 
Um, so these turnarounds, apart from the caudal turnarounds, but the the first few turnarounds we're looking at. So we go two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It comes in on the two. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'll slow it down. Two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one. Okay. Before we look at the second half of the turnaround, I just want to say when your fingers are in this position, your top, your pinky's on the top E, 12th fret, and your first finger's on the ninth fret of the D. If you flatten your first finger and bar it, That chord is used a lot in Delta Blues. Sometimes um, the guitars are tuned to open chord tunings and it gets that sound with a, other times, you know, you, you're playing in standard tuning as we are today and you get that effect. And that's an E, quite a useful chord to know because it's an E because your pinky here is on the top E. So if you play it here, it's going to be an A because your pinky's on the A note. It's a B because the pinky's on the B note. Sorry, I sounded a bit like George Formby then, didn't I? So I apologize massively for that. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, Okay, and at this point, because we're up here, I thought we'll find a B7 that's near that. Of course, we're going to play the B7 here on the seventh fret. And all we're going to do is... Um, not even using the third finger, as far as picking it is concerned, I just naturally put it there. Um, the important thing is we do a hammer on to the eighth fret. Um, so we bar the seventh fret, the whole, th the whole, all six strings with our first finger. And we're gonna hammer on the, the G string eighth fret with our second finger. And at the same time, we're gonna pinch the bass string, the G string, the B and the top E, like that. And again, we're kind of feeling that rhythm, pinch, gets you back to the shuffle okay so all together that turn around two three four one two three four one i often go into the shuffle with a bend of the third fret of the bottom e to get me back to the one so one more time uh, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, um, so that's the real classic Robert Johnson turnaround. Um, now here's for a a nice one actually um i was teaching at the igf summer school last no this year actually in august um alongside neville martin and we were doing a and chris corcoran a blues guitarist neville martin was the editor of guitarist magazine for many years now he's just he just writes for it because he's kind of nearly i don't know he's just stepped down a bit and they run this week every summer called the IGF and I teach acoustic guitar on that. And, um, and I was doing a workshop with Chris Corker on Corker on, on, uh, acoustic blues. He's in a more of a jump jive electric player, but he asked me to come in and do a workshop on blues. And I was showing this turnaround that I've just taught you and someone played this 
ascending melody kind of turnaround. And I, I forgot about it actually. And it kind of rejogged it into my memory. And uh, it's a really cool one. So basically what you've got going on, I told you about that chord, right? Being an E. So you've got nine, 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 12. So the turnaround starts with that. You could actually pick all four strings. So the thumb on the D, first finger on the G, etc. Then what you've got to do, um, uh, Sorry, yeah, yeah, but it's kind of putting me off from starting from here. Of course, you start up here. Um, as this, as the D string descends, you want to be playing an ascending line on the B string here. So we start. Your third finger's on the D string, 12th fret. Your first finger plays the B string, ninth fret, and your pinky is on the 12th fret of the top E. So it's a bit of a kind of stretch. Um, like that, okay? Pinch it twice. So you're going to pinch all three of those strings that you're fretting 12, 9, and 12, like that. After that, the second part, of course, we want the D string to descend like that. So, what I do fingering wise, there's a few ways to do it. Um, you can bring your first finger up to the B string 10th fret and your second finger is going to play the 11th fret of the D like that. Okay. Okay. So imagine you're playing a kind of A minor seven, but just up here and your pinky's on the top E string. Okay. So what we now need to do is continue going down on the D string with this finger, but up on the B string with that. So how are we going to do that? What you've got to do is switch this finger. So, so your first finger is now going to play the 10th fret of the D and your, and this finger, actually I use my third finger is going to come in and play the 11th fret of the B. Okay. So it's a bit of a finger twister. You've got to practice it quite a bit. Okay, so that's the fingering. And then finally, we want to get that note there and also this note here. So you want to play nine, 12, 12. So all together. Okay, definitely one you might have to practice a few times. I certainly have to practice that a bit just to get it sounding sweet. Another way, just show you another way to finger it. You can start the chord like this. And then imagine you're playing like a minor seven shape, you know, if you you know, the B minor shape. But you're just kind of doing that up here. So you add your second finger to the B string 10th fret and your third finger to the D string 11th fret. Your pinky's still there. It's quite a comfortable move as well. And then at this point, you've got a few options, but I think 
for me that's the nicest move which is the first way we did it and then bang so and then back to the b7 there okay so have a little practice through that run through it and get it together okay and now um the chordal turnaround um so there are two uh, versions of this the basic one basically we're going to go uh, e e7 a a minor uh, to e okay c9 to b9 okay i'll run through those chords slowly so this is the chordal turnaround e and we do two beats on each so Unusually for a turnaround, we're actually coming in on the first beat now. We play E1 and then E7, 2, and so 1, 2, A, A minor, or you could even play A7 to A minor. Then we go back to the E. Okay, so all together. Seven, A, A minor, E. Nice kind of jazzy sharp five. So it's a C9 that we're playing there. Um, if you play a B7 chord, as we looked at before, slide it up a fret. You could actually play that chord, it would sound quite cool. Or you could move your pinky to the B string third fret that, that's a c9 you could even flatten it and play the top three strings really kind of real jazzy chord there and you just slide it down to the b so the timing goes two three that again so one two three four e e seven a a minor e c one more time one two three four e e seven a a minor So again, I won't dwell too long on this because the tabs are there, the videos are there, and you can re-watch this anytime you like. Um, finally, a really nice jazzy version. It's a bit more advanced. Um, the chordal turnaround. So the second version of this chordal turnaround, we play an E up here. So imagine you, you're playing a... Uh, You've got a capo on the seventh fret and you play an A shape. That's your E, right? Because that note there is an E, A shape. So there's your E. One and. At this point, we're going to play an E7 over a B. So C7 shape or a C shape, add the pinky, C7. If you play that shape up on the fifth fret, that's an E7. So like a C7 shape. But all the way up. So your first finger's on the fifth fret of the B. That's your E7. If you move your third finger to the bass string. So that's an, an E7 over a B. Nice, uh... I don't know, for some reason I like having that B in the bass. You don't have to have a B in the bass. Then we go to the A. 
So we're playing a bar chord A, uh, barring the fifth fret and playing the E shape. Okay. At this point, you could play the A minor as we do in the original. works perfectly well but another thing people often do is they play a B half to a B flat diminished so simply those those notes it's really you know I recommend learning this chord because it's pretty cool and handy to know so the chord is um, an easy way to get the fingering quickly is to think of that B7 shape again. Yeah, so play the B7. Uh, take your pinky off. So we're just worrying about these three fingers here. It's a C7, uh, sorry, a D7 shape, but starting on the A string. Now, if you just move your second finger down to the bass string, the second finger naturally mutes the A. You can't hear the A at all. If you uh, move that up to the sixth fret, that's your B flat diminished. So it's like a seven shape, but just like that. I'm only picking, I'm only um, letting three of the strings sound. The others are muted. So only three notes are sounding. So, so far we've got it's kind of climbing up back to the E okay notice I naturally there pl played the B note with my first finger although I was playing that E that power chord of E again or the, the, the bar chord of E I should say but if you add the B note to the bottom you're letting that rise the, the bass line is rising which makes a lot of sense musically because that's an, a five in the bass. Which is done all the time if you're a bass player. You'd, be, you'd constantly be going between the one and the five. So, all together, two, three, four, play the sharp five so c seven down to b seven so all together two three four and again two three four you what if you've just played that along with me in time then fair play you know that would if i didn't know that that would have taken me many minutes to go away and just sit and practice that you know half an hour maybe if those chords were new to you and you've just played it it's amazing if basically what i'm trying to say is i i doubt you've just been able to play along with me and if you haven't don't worry you've just got to go and practice that's simply the only thing you can do everyone has had to i had to go and learn those new chord shapes so go away sit alone look at the chords memorize the positions i just want to quickly show you actually something cool you know that shape there for the b flat diminished if you move it up and, and you move your second finger to the to the A string, that's an E7, and again, you're not playing it like that. But remember, we played it with the, with that in the bass, right? So it's, it's actually the same chord. So 
to make the turnaround even easier, all you've got to do is learn that shape. It, it's probably a new chord shape for many people watching this. It's possibly a new chord shape for you watching this. Um, so to make the E7 easier, rather than having to go, you know, four fingers, you could actually just play it with three fingers. You can go. So um, that's the, uh, they're the six turnarounds. And as I say, really handy stuff. I'm just going to go through, I'm going to play a 12 bar blues in the key of E and I'm going to play each one uh, and show you kind of how, how they sound with the 12 bar blues. So here we go from the top. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Takes you in nicely, you know. So that would be kind of a, a very nice way to start a blues song. Get that under your fingers and people are going to be like, wow, that's nicer than just a straight ahead, straight into a shuffle. Um, the second one, two, three, four, one, two. even cooler so i recommend you know learning it as i have you know there's there's no secret you've just got to go away and put in the minutes the hours and learn those turnarounds and of course practice them dead slow i mean a, a slow blues is beautiful too As you kind of play with meaning and you know it's going to sound nice even at the slowest tempo and of course the slower you play it the quicker you learn you know the easier it is to learn so don't feel like you have to play it at the speed i'm playing it at right now i just for some reason picked it at this tempo um so this so that was the second one the third one is the robert johnson Again, a great way to start a tune or, or throw in halfway through, you know, in the middle to get you back to the start of a 12 bar blues. So let's try that together. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, when you're on over the hill. Okay. Fourth one was the uh, okay. If you can play this lot, like you've just taken this lesson without pausing it, or you're watching it live with me for the first time, if you can do that, then fair play, you know. Um, so here we go one, two, three, four, one, two. And then we have the two chordal ones at the end. The first one, E, E7, A, A minor, E, then C sharp to B. Here we go. One, two, three, four. E, E7, A7, A minor, A, E. And then finally, the chordal one we just looked at. So here we go. Two, three, four. So there's six turnarounds, kind of three different versions with variations on each. More, more advanced variations on each. And um, 
I really recommend, you know, trying to get your head around these because when it comes to playing a blues, a 12 bar blues, the more of these, you know, the more, you know, the, the more, the better you sound, you know, the more, um, it, it's not just the same thing, you know, because a lot of people will only learn one and do that every time, which is okay. But if you can come up with some variations on them, then, you know, you're only going to play better blues. Um, so I mentioned um, in the write up for this that there is that you can throw these in. You don't just have to throw them in um, at, you know, on bars 11 and 12. And it's definitely the case. So I'll just I'm just going to jam a bit now on my own. I'm just going to improvise and I'm going to try throwing in the turnarounds, maybe not at bar 11 and 12 and just see if I can get them in. So here we go uh, from the top. Bar two, bar three, bar four. So there was one, bar five, bar six, bar seven, bar eight, bar nine. So back to the standard time. As you can see, I'm throwing them in. I'm playing pretty quick there, but definitely over bars three and four, it worked um, pretty well. And also over bar seven and I think, yeah, but sorry, bar, it goes to the A. I think it's bar six. So bar one, two, three, four. Bar two sometimes goes to A, back to bar three for the 12 bar blues. Bar four, we're going to go up to bar five, five, yeah, six, here I think it would work, bar seven, bar eight, bar nine, so on the seventh bar as well, you can throw them in, you could throw in any of them, um, let's try throwing in a chordal turnaround, the more advanced one, over bars three and four, See if it sounds all right. It might not. I don't know if I've done it before, but here we go. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Sounded all right, didn't it? It did actually sound pretty cool um, with some lyrics. So one, two. see you can throw them in and um, of course I've practiced these a lot to deliver this lesson um, and these are the these are the turnarounds I really recommend learning them I hope that's been nice I'm now gonna go back to the main page and see if people are still here all ah, right Brian um here we are okay sorry I'm just seeing all of the comments Greg in Columbus hey man hey Greg um hey Rory hi Mike <laughs> Rory found it. Mary, do I need a different password for the chat? Obvious, obviously not. Facebook. Yeah, I use Facebook as well, Brian. Um, there are many different ways to um, log in. So Brian's saying really useful stuff. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it, they are. You know, they're handy, handy turnarounds. And it's really nice to have you all here giving me the opportunity to really um, work to create this these lessons so thanks for coming and thanks for being here and hopefully you can go away and practice these um so normally i would say in two weeks time we'll be having a zoom catch up 
um, looking at this, but two weeks today is Christmas Day. <laughs> um, yeah, ex there, look, I've just seen Rory's message liking the contrary motion one. Yeah, you've got a kind of ascending line working against it. Yeah, I love that one too. Um, Ake couldn't log in. We were both trying to follow the link, but only found... Which, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll figure that out. I'll, I'll introduce... I'll, I'll maybe drop... A, a, okay. A, uh, an, an email. Unless he's he's in. I don't think he's in right now. Um, we'll see. Anyway, where were we? Yeah, so I normally say, see you in two weeks, and we'll have a catch-up Zoom on this. But two weeks today is Christmas Day. So... Three weeks today is New Year's Day, and I'm personally happy on New Year's Day. Um, what do we do? What do you do on New Year's Day? You know, well, if you want to turn up um, to the Zoom room, I'll be going live at um, 5 p.m. Uh, UK time, which is 6 p.m. in Central Europe. Um, check your time zones. It will be on this page and be there and we'll start off the, the the zoom with a deep dive into these turnarounds you can show me what you've come up with i can critique what you're playing we can have a bit of a jam through um i'll play live for you know we'll have a bit of a jam on the 12 bar blues and hopefully you can throw in some turnarounds and if you're struggling with anything i'll i'll be able to critique you and then after that after that we're going to go into a new year's open mic uh bit of a session uh if Depending on the time of day, have a beer or a, a cup of tea. I'll probably be on the tea New Year's Day, but um, it should be a bit of fun, that one. So if you're sitting at home on New Year's Day alone uh, or, you know, um, or you've been out and you don't want to, <laughs> you just want to get a bit of time away, come and join us on Zoom New Year's Day. Um, and then, of course, we'll be going into 2023 with uh, the member Zooms happening every Sunday, the same time. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody. If anyone has any questions before I close, uh, nice one, Rory. We'll be back for our New Year's Day walks. Lovely. Um, Brian's, I didn't realize initially you have to go to the, okay, yeah, okay. Now you know, Brian, you have to come to this page here. Um, I have guests that day. No worries, Mary. Of course, it will be posted in the archive if you want to watch it back. Cheers, Ian. Nice one, man. Um, I'm going to end the session now. I've now got to drive to France, believe it or not. So uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes. But um, if you, in the meanwhile, have any questions, want to get in touch, I'm always at the end of an email. Um, I'm still doing the Zooms. If if you're if you want a one to one, um, an exclusive benefit of you know the site is drop me a message. Go to the forum. You can pick a time slot and hook up with me on Zoom. Catch up and you know ha happily do that i've got plenty of time actually in the coming months daytimes for me are, well daytimes europe time uh, are pretty pretty empty i t tend to gig at night um so yeah get in touch and thanks for watching and see you in the in the next video but i hope that's helped with the uh, loose turnarounds cheers everyone see you next time cheers <laughs>